So we'll now go to the, uh, the next presenter, uh, which is TC Pub Media Inc. Madam Secretary? That is right. <laughs> <laughs> That's what happens when you step out of the room. Hello, I'm Francois Caron, President and CEO of TC Pub Media Incorporated, and I would like to begin by thanking the Commission for allowing me to participate in the Let's Talk TV hearings, and I would also like to thank the Commission for allowing me to present my intervention in the form of a video. After listening to over 100 interventions during the last two weeks, most of them presented by industry representatives with very specific business plans, I believe the Commission now requires a different perspective on the subject of Canadian television and how we can make it better. So let's get started. Roll it. This is a film about Canadian content. But hold on. I know just mentioning the words Canadian content is enough to make you want to run off and watch something else. And that's the problem. We watch so many American shows on Canadian television that many of us identify more with American culture than with Canadian culture. <laughs> Since 1952, Canada has produced and aired many English language Canadian shows, but very few of them have ever achieved enough success to be recognized or even remembered. Meanwhile, the French-Canadian television industry exploded with the creation of many popular and culturally relevant French-Canadian television shows that achieve higher ratings than most of the more popular English-Canadian television shows in a market a quarter of the size of the rest of the nation. Foreign content is presented on French-Canadian television, but it rarely reaches the same level of popularity as the domestic stuff. Unlike the foreign content presented on English-Canadian television, which dominates the primetime schedule to the point of squeezing out almost all of the Canadian content. To make matters worse, Canadians now have the option of completely eliminating Canadian television from their lives by receiving worldwide content over the internet from reasonably priced over-the-top providers on a wide range of consumer devices. So why is French-Canadian content so popular that it has its own star system, while English-Canadian content appears to be in the process of being abandoned? I've studied the problem for a very long time, and I believe it comes down to this. Signal substitution. When an American television show is broadcast simultaneously in both Canada and the United States, Canadian cable providers will substitute the American cable signal you're currently watching with a Canadian cable signal without changing the channel on your cable box. The content remains the same, but the advertising is Canadian instead of American. But here's the problem. By forcing Canadian cable subscribers to watch American content only from Canadian sources, Signal substitution gives American content a guaranteed audience, artificially boosting the ratings and the advertising revenues of American content presented on Canadian television. Signal substitution has created a serious trade imbalance that leaves Canadian content at an economic and competitive disadvantage against American content, even when the government is paying for it. The French-Canadian television industry, however, can't take advantage of signal substitution due to linguistic and time zone differences. So instead of relying on foreign content for their economic viability, they produce massive amounts of their own content year after year after year. Do you see where this is leading? If we want to encourage the English-Canadian television industry to drop the American content and go Canadian instead, we must eliminate the entity responsible for this mess in the first place. No, not that. No. No. Hold it. Yeah, that's it. 
signal substitution. Eliminating signal substitution will give Canadians the freedom to choose their source of American content instead of having the Canadian source imposed on them. Forbidding signal substitution will also prevent vertically integrated corporations from attempting to impose their Canadian source against their own customers. As more Canadians choose to watch American content from American channels, the value of American content presented on Canadian channels will begin to drop. Once the value of American content reaches the value of Canadian content, Canadian broadcasters will be financially motivated to produce more Canadian content in order to maintain their audience share and cash flow. To finance the demand for more Canadian content, we could redirect the production resources from poor quality Canadian television channels to better quality channels. To identify which Canadian channels should live or die, we must implement pick and pay. A wide-reaching and compulsory pick and pay system would put every cable channel up for grabs, allowing Canadians to keep the channels they want and get rid of the channels they had to buy just to get the channels they wanted. Canadians could also eliminate the channels they can receive with an antenna, supporting local over-the-air broadcasts and stimulating the local television economy. Over time, the least popular channels will be identified and shut down, and their resources can be redirected into the production of new Canadian content for the surviving channels. To prevent Canadians from dumping too many Canadian channels at once, and possibly bankrupt the Canadian television industry overnight, the CRTC must maintain its current requirement that at least half of a cable subscriber's channel package consists of Canadian channels. Reaching the 50% minimum shouldn't be a problem for most Canadians, as there's already some Canadian programming we like to watch on a regular basis. This minimum requirement will also give Canadian channels that might normally not be chosen a better chance at survival. That's it. Three simple proposals that will restore competitive balance in the Canadian television marketplace, encourage the industry to deliver more and better Canadian content, and give all Canadians better television choices and lower cable bills. By encouraging the Canadian television industry to move towards a pro-Canadian television business model, instead of watching American content about American culture, we may soon choose to watch our own content about our own culture, content that truly reflects who we are as a people and as a nation. Canadian content. That's it? That's it. <laughs> Excellent. Good. It's rare that you hear applause at a Canadian uh, a CRTC <laughs> hearing, but uh, I think it was a uh, testament to your creativity and uh, your originality, which frankly uh, adds a little life to a hearing in the <laughs> Thank you. last day of the second week. Uh, so I'll pass you uh, to um, Vice Chair, who may have some questions for you. Thank you very much. Very briefly, because your presentation is quite clear. I think we went from um, uh, the propless wonder this morning to the over-the-top prop uh, <laughs> job here, over-the-top in... Uh, in the impressive and not internet sense of the word. Uh, so congratulations. It was really, really well done, obviously. Thank you. Um, but just briefly, I mean, you've heard, I think you've been following our hearing, and you've certainly been reading um, our working document, um, and you've heard a lot of uh, opposition um, as it regards the proposal on SimSub and pick and pay um, in that inevitably, and I saw that you saw that be a balancing act from what you proposed in your right. video and your presentation. Um, but many uh, interveners disagree and think that uh, inevitably the pie will shrink 
um, and will have much uh, less in terms of resources to produce Canadian content. You seem to be pleading the opposite. I'm going to give you a chance to sort of address further um, some of the concerns that you've heard in the last couple of weeks as regards SimSub and pick and pay and sort of they, they go hand in hand in, in um, depleting the resources Canadian uh, producers have. Well, my opinion is based on both my personal experience along with the uh, comments I keep reading on the internet at various places about uh, the state of uh, Canadian television and also the state of uh, the Canadian cable system as well. And essentially a lot of people are getting very fed up with the idea that they have to buy not only just a whole theme of channels to get the one channel they want, but now they're being put in a, into a position where they may need to buy multiple channels just to get one show out of each channel. It's sort of spread in a way that uh, very often what I've seen in certain scheduling is that a good channel that was on a, on a good television show that was on a good channel sometimes gets moved to the bad channel, forcing people to actually have to get the bad channel along with it. It gets to be a bit of a problem. And sometimes that bad channel is in another package. In a bad package as well. You know, so you get the double whammy I mean, and you get to pay for it. Yeah. And part of the, um, the thinking, obviously, in the, in the reading of our document was that if you create a skinny basic, mm. that would certainly help the situation. You didn't address the skinny basic issue in your document of the day, but would you maybe speak to that issue? Well, what I brought up in the video is that I would prefer a pick-and-pay system where every single channel was a pick and pay. Uh, for this is because the problem with the skinny basic is that uh, viewers are counted, well, the channels, they're rated based on how many subscribers they get on cable. The problem is nobody has the option to say, I don't want that channel and to have that number removed from the total. In my, uh, my idea of uh, a pick and pay, a completely uh, inclusive, is that uh, it gives people the opportunity to get out of a channel that they don't want at all, even if it's given for free. So even OTAs would be excluded from, there would be no skinny basic. There would be even no skinny the basic. OTAs the OTAs are free. You have the cable companies just charge a base rate to get just the cable. And then they can start adding the channels they want, and they can choose to add the channels, even the free ones that they want to have on their system. This way it gets tabulated. It gets tabulated which free channels are actually worth something while the other ones are not. So you get the base, the cable for free. And no, not the cable for free. You get it for a specific for a amount price, per month. Yes. But no channels included in that. Right. And then you pick, including your OTAs. Exactly. And because a lot of people right now, we can get, like I saw, like I showed in the video, and I even created a, a two-minute video called uh, Surviving the Canadian Digital Transition, where I actually showed assembling a... Uh, an antenna out of, out of a coat hanger and actually demonstrating that it works perfectly. Yes, I saw that. Oh, you really? saw that video. Um, but uh, the, the point, the, well, here's the other point. Um, and we heard from uh, Mr. Moranis a few minutes ago in that American productions are of a certain quality, they have certain budgets, and they'll always attract uh, viewers in Canada and around the world. Not How do you compete with that given our small market? Not quite. It's not all in terms of quality. There is also one important factor that hasn't taken into consideration, and it's the quality of the storyline. That is what's starting to lack more than anything else. And uh, in fact, I've been dropping a lot of shows in recent years, just abandoning a lot of shows just because I got fed up with the lousy storylines. And uh, that's when I realized, in fact, I have a uh, a tendency to watch mostly British shows these days because I find them much better quality in terms of the storyline. In terms of production, it's, uh, it's nothing magical. I know that uh, third-year stu students at Concordia can do these level, <laughs> produce material of this level of quality perfectly, but it's the storyline that always gets them in the end that actually determines if the show succeeds or not. Right. I mean, if quality was that important, a silly movie in the States like Sharknado wouldn't have been as successful as it was if it wasn't so campy to begin with. Um, and, and the francophone market, um, there was also some uh, mention made earlier in the, in the hearing that um, there are even threats there, even though there's a, a bit of a linguistic barrier, which is less and less present um, amongst the younger generations um, of, of Quebecers. Um, you don't see that star system changing once the linguistic barrier is no longer there, as mentioned in your video? Mm. What I would see, you mean in, ter in terms of the English market? Yes, the, the, right. the American, the desire for American content mm -hmm. um, finding its way into the Quebec market as well. Well, I wouldn't worry too much about that because already people are complaining about the fact that the prime time has become crime time. 
And uh, people are getting a little bit fed up, not only for the crime shows, but also for the reality TV shows, which are done on the cheap. In Quebec? Not only not in Quebec, but in, oh. the, in the North America. In Quebec, it is starting to become a bit of a problem. There have been a few more uh, imports, like uh, Le Banquier, which is a top-rated show, is actually an import of uh, Deal or No Deal. But it's a it concept, is, yeah. Yeah, but uh, still has been heavily... Uh, turned into a Quebec format, uh, so it actually gra grabs an audience just by the cultural aspect. It's the same thing with the show Tout le monde en parle. It is, it, while the sets may look similar to the original French production, which has been cancelled, uh, the French-Canadian production still is very heavy on the French-Canadian culture, and it helps promote its own material very well. Well, even Quebec material, uh, prime yeah. time is quite crime time as well, if you look at... Yeah, uh, but uh, it, uh, it doesn't have the habit of always being like that. There's still, when yeah. I checked my uh, data, I found that uh, a lot of uh, soaps are still among the top rated shows. And some of them, they're not like uh, heavy soaps which are depressing. I know that uh, Les Parents is still popular, and it's uh, not uh, a depressing type of show. It actually has some humor in it while having some serious subject matter. Well, we appreciate um, your time today. Really appreciate it, Mr. Chair. Oh. Uh, you, you've invested a lot of time in doing that, and it's very effective. So thank you very much. Thank, thank, you. thank you. Those are our questions. And I'm going to I would now ask. Uh, we'd heard this morning uh, from uh, the representative from Netflix that uh, their business model is built on films and, uh, and television episodic well, shows, basically. Um, have you had a chance to, because you haven't really touched on sim simultaneous substitution here, because it's, again, a television issue, but uh, we've had a couple of very effective presentations, including Mr. Caron's just a minute ago, his video, where the, the thesis is that um, the, the, the production of Canadian films and, and, and television uh, product uh, is largely inhibited by the, uh, the, our continued use of SimSub. And that if we got out of that habit of using it, even though it produces revenue, there would, it would create the prime time holes that would have to be filled by more Canadian productions. And, uh, and it, it's logical to assume part of those um, holes would be filled by uh, Canadian films, either, uh, you know, the second, third uh, window. So have you thought about that or talked about that amongst your members? That has not come up among our members. Um, I'd be happy to consult with the members and understand our collective view on that and, and um, submit that to the commission at a later date. Um, so I don't really have a unified view. I have, have perhaps personal views, but I don't think that's There isn't relevant. much of a later date. Unfortunately, uh, if it's to be, if those slides should be included in this hearing, there's a, there's a cutoff uh, point of uh, the 19th. Uh, but, uh, but you certainly could address it in your final comments. Yes, okay. absolutely. And I might, I might be uh, quite smart to do that.